What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Steel Trap Mind Show. I'm your host, Andrew Carter, alongside the other host, Jennifer Bolton, and our dog, Archie. <laughs> I, let's hope he doesn't <laughs> bark. We, and... Can we be taken seriously with our dog uh, with us? I think it gives more credibility. Yeah, it does. Right. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, had a lot of uh, life events with moving and you know inflation careers etc so been a little bit on the back burner but we are coming back with coming back at you guys with uh some uh, new content and uh you know just really useful information um have a huge story i mean that's constantly evolving um really the ftx I, at this point we'll call it a soap opera almost it's uh it's really unbelievable what's been happening. Um, I, I mean, it, it only broke here about three weeks ago. It seems like every day there is like, you know, something new coming to light. Um, it, it just gets more, <laughs> it gets more and more ridiculous. Okay, so for the people who don't know what is what FTX is and what's going on, we should probably do a really quick introduction of uh, what FTX is. You know, FTX, they're one of the most, you know, well-known crypto companies. And, you number know... Number two in the world. Or, or number number two or three. Um, let's just put it this way. They were spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a Super Bowl recently. They had a Super Bowl ad with Larry David, which, you know, in the ad he's saying, you know, he doesn't believe in FTX. It's not going to work, which, like, in, so, in so hindsight is... Hilarious. I, it's so Larry David too. I love, I love the commercial. Watching that commercial, I think really are in a simulation. So in, in the commercial, Larry David, he's you know skeptical of everything, and they show him the FTX app, and he basically is like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not buying it's it. It's not, it's not, it's not pretty. It's not pretty good. I don't know. He's not. And and, and yeah, so it turns out he was right all along. Um, <laughs> we talk about Larry David, and I get sidetracked. Well, you, you yeah, can't bring, well, it you was can't like bring up Larry. through history, kind of denouncing all the biggest, you know, um, advancements of that time. Yeah, he, where he he's like, ah, oh, I'm not buying it. Like oh. in, indoor plumbing, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want to poop in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Por, port, portable C player, I don't want to, I don't want to care about your batteries. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, don't be Larry, get in on the, on the new biggest. But uh, buying crypto on exchange, not, not my thing. But yeah. Um, so it. Anyway, um, FTX, one of the most well-known crypto companies. They're advertised as Super Bowl. Um, the basketball arena, you know, where the Miami Heat play, uh, they renamed the stadium to FTX Arena. Well, I mean, that's pretty, you know, you think that's very significant. What, what I think Naming the most rights. interesting part of the story is, is that they were founded in 2020. So they're not very old. The Sam Bankman Freed character mm -hmm. is only like 29 years old. He's my age. Right. They, they formed the company with like a group of friends that they worked with at an investment company. It doesn't even seem like a company. It seems like a bunch of like friends in their dorm room, you know, it, it, they're partying. It, it, it's almost like, but, you know, a side somehow, somehow they got the favor of all these investors. Um, there's even a report that he's like, playing a video game during a big meeting yeah, well, with well wearing, a, wearing a hoodie with the hood up so yeah. he's not he's not just wearing a hoodie he's got he's got a hood up at a meeting I mean we're, we're here doing a YouTube channel we're buttoned up like we well, have our dog yeah right? well we have our dog but we're well mannered and dressed this guy has investors from let's let's go down the list uh, his cachet BlackRock Anderson Horowitz uh, the second biggest pension fund in the world, the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund. Um, I, I mean, it, that is quite the cachet of, you know, prominent investors. This guy's in meetings playing video games with the, the hood up. He was wearing a hoodie. Mm -hmm. So. But somehow, someone took, took, all these people took him seriously. He got billion dollars, billions of dollars in funding and had... A huge amount of customers trading billions in crypto mm -hmm. so okay so let's define what a crypto exchange is well an exchange in general um, 
it, it's, you know, what, what the word says. I mean, it, it's a place where you buy and sell, you know, goods. And obviously, you know, it's in exchange, whether it is a stock market exchange or commodities, it's going to be specific. And it's going to specialize in, you know, that certain product you're exchanging. And, you know, the, the reason why you'd buy off exchange versus, you know, peer to peer, you know, you buy directly from me. There's more liquidity that way. You have uh, ease of, you know, transaction. Um, you know, there's clearance and. Yeah, all, all that boring stuff, well, settlement. It's just, it's just the easiest way. Like, I have a Coinbase right. account, and I can see my assets. I can see how much I have of each asset. I can see the market trending. And it's just the easiest, most expedient way to do it. Right. I mean, because with crypto, the alternative is to have it, you know, in a cold storage on, you know, an actual hard drive. Um, so it's a lot slower. It's a lot less liquid. Um, so that's the reason why, you know, people use the exchange. I mean, with, with the stock market, before everything was, you know, discount brokers and exchanges, you actually had physical stock certificates. So if I wanted to buy a stock, you actually had to buy, you'd, you'd, you'd buy the stock, but then they issue you a piece of paper. And it's just like, you know, when you have billions of shares of stock, that's, that's way, that's too cumbersome. You can't, you know, it, 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 it was not feasible. So with crypto, you actually have paper stocks. I'm, I'm, I that might be, the, I might be the only one left. Well, they're they're still in my name, but I, I mean, yeah, paper stock. I, I literally think I'm the only person who still has any paper stock certificates. No, you're I not call, the only. I can guarantee I'm, you're I'm not one of, the only. I'm one of the few. I'm like I'm one of the holdouts. That's, <laughs> I'm the holdout. I, I I call Fidelity. All these other brokers. They don't know what the hell to do with the paper because it's you know it's someone on the phone who's like twenty five or thirty. The, the paper stock has changed like before they were born. They don't know what. But <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure people somewhere have bank deposit boxes full of paper stocks. Uh, yeah, in, in a vault in the Cayman Islands somewhere. That's where I hope to be someday, avoiding taxes. I Good to know. I didn't know <laughs> that no, was just, the future. Anyway, you'll, you'll, you'll be with you'll be with me. We'll both be avoid <laughs> doing tax avoidance somewhere. Switzerland, Switzerland is my fair country to do tax avoidance. But in, anyway, uh, I did. This is news <laughs> to me. <laughs> oh, the, so, uh, just okay, so, shift, shifting gears. So okay, talk so, about exchanges. So we've set the stage where this this guy is very well connected. Uh, to uh, his his parents are professors. They're associated at, with at Stanford. They're tenured Stanford. professors at Stanford, which is really hard. Highly evolved in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's very well connected. He's built this company seemingly overnight, and he's got this sister company, Alameda, which he's also owns ninety percent of. That his girlfriend is is the CEO of. Well, they didn't know that was his girlfriend. I think that's like come out after the fact that. They were dating. Did I write Caroline? I Car didn't... Caroline Ellison is her name. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so, and he's you know here. This is a whole inter in industry of people who are you know the crypto industry are people that are trying to be pioneers and are really are really bucking against the system, trying to create their own system trying to buck against regulation because the governments of the world there seems to be so corruption so much corruption right now yeah we no longer trust our governments like we used to no. and so we have this huge movement to have our own money that's uncontrolled by governments and here is the sam bankman fried character who's giving huge amounts of money to the democratic party and is 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 um lobbying. testifying in front of congress yeah for, mm -hmm. for regulations to be put in place over the crypto community. Well, this guy, he was in everyone's pocket. Um, I, like, like his ascension, uh, I mean, I think this cup was started in 2020. Um, he's got, you know, Tom Brady and Giselle on as investors. Um, I, I mean, the Miami Heat are one of the biggest teams in, you know, professional basketball. He has the naming rights to the Heat arena. I mean, this is where LeBron James you know, if people don't know basketball, it's where LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, you know, used to play. I mean, that's, you know, uh, up there with the Lakers and Celtics in terms of name recognition. I, I mean, 
Super Bowl commercials, naming rights for sports stadiums, you know, all, all these, you know, Tom Brady, all these, you know, I mean, really, the, it, it's not like some, you know, fly-by-night company. I mean, these are established, like, venture capital firms have been doing it for, you know, since the inception of venture capital, basically. And, then, and he has all of them, like, you know, in his wheelhouse, and no one knows who the hell this guy was two years ago. And then there was the Coindesk mm -hmm. article. Right. Um, and so the Coindesk article said that their books were questionable. And see, I want to know, I, I mean, maybe someone at Coindesk looked at their books and saw that, or maybe they were privy to it and released it. Or maybe someone Or someone leaked it to Coindesk. Off. That's possible. It, that, that's definitely possible. So, okay, so there was the Coindesk... Um, article, and then the owner, the billionaire owner of Viance. Uh, um, Ch Chang Zhu. And it's the number one, right? His is the number one. I want to say it's number one. Coinbase yeah. might be number one. Chang Peng Peng Zhu. And so the article caused him to dump his holdings, and I think it was, was it one billion or two billion? Uh, I mean, I it, it, was, it, was an, it was billion. enough to make it plummet. Yeah, Viance liquidates two billion in tokens. So, FTX had its own security token called FTT, or I guess it's right. called a utility token. And, and I guess let, let's circle back a little bit. I mean, we've we get into the weeds. Just there, it's it's hard to like narrow this down. There's so much going on, but um, I mean, let's let's steer back. I mean, just kind of get to the straight facts. So we talked about you know in exchange. What is an exchange? So we know. That, you know, FTX, I mean, that was what they did. And they were supposedly making most of their money. Now, I mean, the business of it's changed. They're making money off of, you know, when I buy or sell that yeah. commodity, you, you get there's commission. Yeah, there's a fee. But here, so he, here's where it gets off the rails really hard. Um, so when, when you have, like, you know, money, let's say at, it could be Fidelity, Robinhood, you know, any broker. Um... Now that money, it's not necessarily like a checking account where, you know, it's FDIC insured, but, but there are rules when you put your money, you know, into an investment account. But so these, they can't, these aren't investment accounts though. Well, that's the problem. It's not, so the, the, the definition is kind of nebulous, but the thing is you, you put money into Fidelity, you know, they, they can't take your funds and then use it uh, for trading other they, they let us so we're, we're, we're jumping we're jumping the timeline here okay um, so basically when this billionaire liquidated all this FTT which is the utility token that FTX created then people started trying to pull their money out of XTX and it caused it to collapse well, it was, it was a run on a bank, basically, but it was... Mm -hmm. But it's not a bank, though. It's an exchange. Well, it's a, it's a run. It's similar, but it's similar. It's a run. But, um, but that has now exposed the huge Ponzi scheme that was going on in FTX. Well, because, again, he was taking people's deposits, and then he was using that money to trade and, you know, basically make risky bets on other crypto. Now... Okay, imagine if like a, a like you have money in checking account. The bank can't take. And I know that I know it's not a bank, but the bank cannot take your money in checking account and say, "Oh, let's go buy, you know, a million dollars of this stock and then lose it." Same as you know any broker, they're not allowed to do that. The you know customer funds have to be separate from, you know, the 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 trade the. The trading funds, you know, the risky money where they're trading investments, but that's where that, that's where it kind of you know again really goes off the rails, and you you, you start to see kind of the thick of the action of what was going on. Was FTX had their own trading firm that was their sister company? Yes, but they were taking. So let's say I bought a hundred bitcoins mm -hmm. with FTX. So it would show on my balance sheet that I have bought 100 Bitcoins and I have 100 Bitcoins in my name. But what really would go on is that's fake. The 100 Bitcoins that I'm seeing when I log into my account does not exist. I have not bought those tokens and my money instead 
has been completely misappropriated in some other way. So it was complete fraud. You know, complete fraud. And he was trying to say this whole thing on Twitter about it was over leveraged and um, you know, there were not the proper government. It's like, no, dude, you win it. You took the money. That's what, you, I, I mean, it was other people's money. You use it to gamble. That's all it was. Right, and they, they, he had bylaws in place in his company, and he pri publicly said that he was not going to take consumers' money and, and invest it in other things. So mm -hmm. he, he lied to people, and he, he broke his own rules that he established for his company, and... Um, it, yeah, and, he, and, and so he put so much money into Alameda, but then when they started looking at their uh, bank balance, their primary holdings were in FTT. And you got to realize, right? And you got to realize FTT is a token that they created that they artificially gave a value to. So it was like finding out that Alameda was the only thing they had was fake money. Mm -hmm. So they're basically they're they're issuing their own token, and then they're calling that an asset on their balance sheet. Now, one of my all-time favorite, um, and everyone should check her out, uh, Lynn Alden, uh, one of the best uh, figures in uh, macroeconomics, uh, any kind of financial writing. Just, I mean, just incredible. Uh, any, everyone go look her up. Um, but she had this comparison that. On its face, sounds like the most ridiculous thing, but this is pretty much what happened. So imagine that, uh, let's say McDonald's issues their own currency. So they come out and say, "Hey, we issued a billion dollars of McDonald's bucks, and we're gonna call that, you know, money we issued those McDonald's bucks. That's gonna be a billion dollars on our balance sheet. So we're using this." currency McDonald's issued in our own name as our own asset. Now let's say that Starbucks, they come out and they issue Starbucks bucks. That sounds redundant, but I, I mean, again, this is essentially, you know, what happened. So Starbucks issued their own currency and they call that an asset on their balance sheet. Now let's say Starbucks holds half of McDonald's bucks. Mm -hmm. They hold, hold half of them in circulation and then Starbucks comes out and says, hey, McDonald's, your currency's useless. They dump it, and you know it, it's like monopoly money. It it plummets. Mm -hmm. That I mean, when you look at FTX and Binance, that's essentially what happened. Was they FTX issued their own token, FTT. Binance was a and, huge and, buyer and, and falsely gave it value. Right. So it wasn't the crypto free market that was assigning value to it. Well, and that's, and I want to get into this because that's like one of the problems with crypto is so many of these firms, they can, they issue their own currency and they can issue it, you know, as much as they want indefinitely, which I mean, if anything, you look at Bitcoin and you can say, well, there really is not like a company behind it and there's a limited supply. So you could, you could give it more of a value proposition. Well, and I, I just watched a video and I finally found someone that agreed with me mm -hmm. um, and that you really need to look at these coins like securities. And, mm -hmm. and um, Bitcoin is a commodity because you can mine Bitcoin, you can buy a computer, you can mine Bitcoin, you're not creating a company, you're creating a token. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, you know, I'm a big Bitcoin supporter. There's a lot of things I like about it, and I, I don't want to get, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too off the rails, but I, mean, I don't know whether Bitcoin's a commodity just because it's not physical. I, mean, I guess it has some aspects of a store of value and commodity, but that's another topic, another mm -hmm. video. But um, uh, again, I mean, Bitcoin, unlike F, uh, you know, FTT token, it doesn't have a company behind it. Um, you know, it has a limited supply, but... So there's so much to talk about with this. There's so much implications. Um, you know, we, there's a new CEO that's a, a bankruptcy lawyer. lawyer and is trying to sort everything out. It's a complete mess. And can I mention, so the, uh, uh, John Ray this is who the new CEO is. When companies are going through a bankruptcy, it's very common. They'll name a bankruptcy lawyer as a CEO. 
This is the same guy who saw the Enron collapse. Mm -hmm. He saw all the dispossession, um, you know, the redistribution of Enron assets to creditors. They asked him his opinion on FTX, and th th these were his words. He said, this is the most complicated mess of a bankruptcy I've dealt with in my 40-year career. I've never seen such a lack of corporate controls and guardrails to prevent you know this from happening. I mean, it's uh, that, well, that is did, that's the that's quite have, the indictment. Like, this regulatory guy that like you don't see his picture, the, you see his back, so no one really knows who he is. And, Who's that? Oh, I forget his name. I need you to fill the names in for okay. me. But so we know that FBF took out three million. SBF. SBF, yeah. The, what did I say? FBF. It's okay. SBF. They he cashed out a uh, three hundred million of a four hundred and twenty million funding round. And then right when the bankruptcy happened, someone bet went in the, in the back door and hacked out $370 million. And I bet it was, I have a feeling it's FBF. That's what I think. I think he had his own back door. And took he, he's like, um, it's like the end of the Vietnam War. Like they're at the embassy. There's helicopters like, you know, getting, they're, 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 they're like fleeing the country to helicopters. He grabs like the last, you know, fighter jet. Uh, or like Af <laughs> Afghanistan, everyone's fleeing, like, you know, off the plane. Sam Bankman, he, he like gets his own plane and flies out, like, you know, before anyone else does. Well, and then, you know, their bit boy has an interview with someone down in the Bahamas where they're talking about how just three weeks before they were opening these um, property, these, these companies, and, and um, just to buy property so they can hide assets in these other companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he knew what was going down. And I, I feel like it was manufactured. I think that, you know, the you know, United States has wanted to regulate this industry. They want to have their own central bank digital currency. They want everyone on that. And they don't want people to have this, you know, free exchange and this this uncontrolled money that's not controlled by anybody mm -hmm. they want to control it and now you, you with people you know they've got a really great opportunity here and reason now to come in and regulate the industry mm -hmm. and it may it may just kind of squash the industry it may just take it out well i mean the the industry like it it needs regulation but um I mean, I get, you know, people are you know, saying this is almost like, um, what do you want to call it? Like a, not a false flag, because it's a real thing, but like, you know, it's like, like a manuf not manufactured event of some kind, yeah, like I where it happened to make I it. I think it is. I think it's a manufactured event. I think the, the fact that, you know, he, he rose so quickly and it was so unusual and had so many people, it, it does kind of seem like very coincidental, like the whole thing. It just seems too coincidental to just be this organically random occurring event. Well, it, it, it it's conspiracy. I mean, I'm I, I'm kind of casting a wide net, casting aspersions. But um, go back to April, Wall Street Journal. They did a really good, really good article on him. They did a, a full profile. I mean, it was like a five page article. Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly like a glowing endorsement, but. It was, we'll call it like a puff piece. I mean, they were comparing him to uh, J.P. Morgan. How, you know, J.P. Morgan saved the banking industry back in the 1900s. They're saying he was the J.P. Morgan of crypto, you know, uh, bailing out these lenders like uh, Genesis and Three Rivers, which, you know, the crypto brokers. I don't even think it ended up going through. I, he was talking about bailing them out. I think he didn't actually have the funds to do it. But, I mean, this, the article that they wrote, I mean... This was not. This was back in April or May. I mean, they were really propping him up. Um, and you look at his ascendancy from the last year. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody crash and burn that quick. I mean, even mm -hmm. Elizabeth Holmes. Um, I, I mean, she was probably a public figure for you know four or five years before you know Theranos crash. But you know, even we work lasted longer. I, I don't know if there's ever been someone who's had a quicker fall from grace, but. You know, an even quicker ascendancy. And, oh, I have to mention this one thing. The craziest thing I've read with all of, you know, this, they're, you know, the, the, the creditors try to figure out how to get people's money back. 
if they have an outstanding bar tab, fifty-five thousand. Is it Margarita and Paradise? Paradise. Uh, Margarita. Margarita Bahamas. Bahamas. But there's like a million creditors. How do you have 55,000, you just buy drinks for everybody? They're just constantly drunk down but there in the it's, Bahamas. It, but it's like the, the like, I don't know what currency the Bahamas uses, but whatever, whatever the Bahamanian currency is, I'm sure it's a favorable exchange rate. So they have a bar tab that big when you have a favorable exchange rate. Who, who wants to buy that many margaritas in her case? They're just all drunk down there working their crypto Switch business. it up. Yeah, get some bourbon on the rock. Um, some ranch water. So, yeah, you can tell like what they're really doing down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves. And there's even... You know, he he financed the Democratic Party. Forty million. Um, yeah. They think that it could have been um, money laundering by the United States government because of his ties and connections. Yeah, I mean that hasn't been. I, there, there have been. That's a theory. Report. It's a theory. There, I don't know how much validity there is, but because the, you know yeah. they were the United States government was giving FTX money to uh, fund Ukraine, and then there was also a um, and you know like. You know, the United States government has given $98 billion to fund this Ukraine effort. And uh, they think some of that money is coming back through with uh, uh, funding contributions. I, hope, I mean, crypt, crypto is a great way to well, launder SBF, money. Yeah, okay. Well, the, the contributions were at launder because that's, like, that's public knowledge. Well, you know, we there was um, this, uh, this charity that, that raised... Um, hundred and seventy million dollars. Well, there there are like a lot of universities and charities who uh, they have like hundreds of millions of dollars in grant money from FTX, and now a lot of those research programs and charities, um, they're probably going to claw back all that money in bankruptcy. So there's you know people missing out on you know uh, research projects, on charitable uh, you know givings. Um, I mean, they had a whole article about Wall Street Journal. So they're literally, they're like, literally clawing all that back well, in there charity. Is, we, there's money. There's so much money. We don't know where it is because this mm -hmm. charity gave FTX a close to two hundred million dollars, and then according to the balance sheets, you know, the Ukraine only have, has used two, twenty-two million of it, and we don't know where the rest of the money is. Yeah, I mean, so this is... tons of money is missing everywhere. Well, and I mean, who even knows if it was money? I mean, a lot of their assets were this useless FTT token. They're paying people salaries well, with is, FTT. Yeah, that's true. But this is this is money that people like Americans donated to the Ukraine effort. This is literally money that Americans mm -hmm. made and worked out and gave FTX that is now missing over 100... Million to 170 million dollars are missing. Yeah, they're they're gonna have to settle all that in bankruptcy court. I, I mean, don't. This is gonna be these bankruptcy proceedings. I mean, th this is gonna be. We could go on for hours. This is gonna be one of many videos. I mean, it's again a constantly evolving story. Something new is breaking every day. And, and let's see if FBF gets because I think he thinks he's gonna be protected. He's given so much money, so many millions of dollars to the government. He thinks that he's going to be protected. So let's see if he's protected. I, let's I'm, see if he's protected or if he's a complete fall guy. Yeah, and well, if the business dealings were done in the Bahamas. I mean, so I don't, I, I mean, I guess he's prosecutable under, you know, some U.S. law, but not all. I mean, it's just, there's so much happening. He'll probably get away with it. But um, in summary, you know, so look at FTX, we defined, you know, what it exchanges. Um, we kind of did a broad overview of you know what exactly happened, where they collapsed. Um, it was a run in their deposits, which uh, we mentioned was caused by you know the CoinDesk report. When the CoinDesk report dropped, Binance pulled their money from you know they, well they, they didn't pull their money. They they sold all their tokens back in the market, causing it to plummet. Um, so then that caused the run on the deposits. And then, you know, the initial collapse, how it all started was their own trading firm, Almeida, was, you know, using customer deposits uh, as collateral to trade. So, you know, kind of a broad overview of that happened. And, and losing money, losing money while doing it. Yeah. Um, 
we'll have more videos on this topic. Um, this is just a... So we always give advice. We always mm -hmm. give advice. I think the advice is um, I don't think we should give up on crypto. I think that we we that, that that this is something that we need that that this is something the world needs and that to put your crypto in a cold wallet yeah having a cold wallet on a hard drive um i mean yeah the, the exchanges are, are a bit shaky um th there there is a, a lot of fraud i mean there's there's been an insane amount of fraud and you know criminal activity in crypto I wouldn't um, I say still, criminal activity. I, I, I call FTX criminal well, activity. Well, I yeah, criminal FTX is criminal activity for sure, mm -hmm. but I think that it's just the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. I, I still think that there's uh, like some use cases and utility with smart contracts, be able to do global global um, peer to peer payment without clearance or settlement. Um, Oh, so, yeah, there's tons of utilities. I, I, mean, I, I still feel like, yeah, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, having on a cold wallet, um, hanging on to that for five, ten years. Um, I mean, I, there, there is still a real case to be made. So, I, would you and, say that? Yeah, and we've moved, you know, we've moved, we, we have different commodities. We've, we've had the fiat dollar based on different things. You know, mm -hmm. we had it based on gold, and then we had the, and then, and then oil, and, you know, moving it to um, a, you know currency a currency based on Bitcoin is definitely you know a feasible uh, reality, and to have some have a little bit of money in Bitcoin and have it you know on a cold wallet, maybe in a safe deposit box, is not a bad idea. Well, I would just say, I mean, the advice um, like with gold, what okay, not by the way, not advice. So we are providing. Uh, That's our opinion. We are we are providing investment education. Um, there are these are our own opinions. So this we are not giving financial advice. We are providing merely education. Um, but um, I I mean so what people can look at doing. Uh, I know with gold and you know how to allocate portfolios. Um, you know a lot of people look at having five to ten percent. You know gold allocated portfolio. I would maybe look at Bitcoin. I mean, just having it, you know, on a cold wallet. Um, you know, just the fact that like gold, there's self custody. Um, so again, I would take a look at that. Uh, might be something to consider. Um, but that, you know, is not advice I'm giving. It's you know, just something just to be considered. Know. We don't know what's going to happen with all of it. You know, mm -hmm. but I'm just still putting my bets on Bitcoin. Yeah. And and maybe a year from now, I'll, I'll change my mind about that. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's just there, there's so much groundbreaking news, and it's constantly evolving. So we'll have uh, we'll have more information on this. Um, we'll have some more short form Instagram videos. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok. Um, we'll, we'll try you know kind of cut these videos down, and make them more digestible for everybody. But um, hey, thank you guys once again for tuning in. We are really happy to be back. Uh, it's been a five six month hiatus. We're we're thrilled to be working on this again. And uh, just giving valuable information to everybody, uh, you know, just kind of providing stuff in a more positive light. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, hopefully, you know, just get, giving giving you some information that can improve your quality of life. But mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Signing off for the Steel Trap Buying Show. Your hosts, Andrew Carter and Jennifer Bolton. All right, take care. <laughs>